This segment of Quality Digest's Virtual Test and Measurement Expo is sponsored by Faro, the world's most trusted source for 3D measurement and imaging solutions. When we were at IMTS a couple of weeks ago, we saw a pretty amazing, in its simplicity, amazing in its simplicity, product from Ferro Technologies called the 8-axis quantum scan arm. And I, I won't steal it thunder because you're going to watch a demo that we recorded earlier uh, here in the studio in just one second. I won't steal it thunder other than to say you're most likely going to be like me and think, this is such an obvious solution to something that every single portable arm operator has faced. Why did somebody only just now invent it? I mean, you'll see what I mean. It's I actually, I mean, I'm not kidding. When we when we saw this at at uh, IMTS, I actually giggled yeah. the first time I saw it. You know what I mean? I, have you ever seen somebody present something to you and it's so obvious you just laugh yeah. because it's like, well, duh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why? That is what I laughed about when I was there. <laughs> it's, it, it's the eight axis and it's brilliant. Watch this demo recorded earlier this week in our studio with Raphael Asbun of Ferro Technologies. Uh, so Raphael, well, uh, what are you gonna show us today? So today I have the new Ferro eight axis. Last time I was here, I uh, showed you guys the updated Quantum S sure. arm, right? And all the marvelous updates that uh, were part of that release. Um, throughout Ferro's history, we've always focused on improving the arm um, but they've always been iterative improvements, right? We've improved portability, accuracy, ergonomics, ease of use. Um, throughout the years, it's always become a great, great product. Uh, but with the 8th Axis, this is a truly revolutionary improvement in terms of how you use the arm and its capabilities. So this is the 8th Axis. It's got similar technology, uh, you know, a circular encoder that's okay. the same encoder that's at the base of the arm. Um, and then there's this plate that sits on top and it'll mount and all the same mounting options you have for the arm tripods and granite cart mounts so and things this like is, that. this is called an eighth axis because it adds one more axis to the seven axis quantum s right exactly okay. yeah so it's, it's it's essentially it's just a rotary encoder with a plate on top yeah it's a very simple concept <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> and there's not much you need to learn took in terms years of, yeah <laughs> right finally somebody, finally somebody thought hey i know <laughs> yeah exactly so that we're really happy with this product yeah. in terms of uh, the tests we've done and even me you know operating in an arm for the last three years this this ace axis is such a great product and so easy to use if you already know how to use an arm there's nothing new you need to learn sure um all you got to do is connect it and do a quick compensation, so that's simply resting the probe on the table and doing a few rotations. Okay. And then that will um, tell the arm where that eighth ac axis is in space, right, and tie that into the okay, coordinate gotcha, system of the arm. Okay, gotcha, all right. And that's all there was to it? All, that's all okay. there is to wow, it, okay. yeah. And um, as long as your you know, software is up to date with the latest drivers and the latest firmware, okay. you can take advantage of the eighth axis system. So uh, throw a part on here so we can do some probing and you can see what that's like. Okay. Now this looks like you put it on about a what is that about a ten inch, about a ten inch plate that comes with the that comes with the eighth axis. That's part of it. Yeah, there's okay. an option to get a. This is a two hundred fifty millimeter plate, around okay. ten inches, right? And okay. then there's also a five hundred millimeter plate. Okay. Uh, we also have fixture kits that will allow you to, for example, prop prop your parts up, or also allow you to um, put bigger parts on here. Right. Yeah. So you can. Um, so I'm assuming I mean, we're we're looking at a smaller part right now, but I'm I'm guessing that. Part of the real interest in this is going to be for putting large parts on it and being able to rotate the large parts and so yeah. forth. Th I mean, th th there is uh, a huge benefit with larger parts and as well as small parts. We've okay. seen an, uh, an average of 20 to 30 percent reduction in the amount of time it takes to inspect and scan even smaller parts. Okay. Right. So uh, I'll show you what some probing looks like. So normally, you know, you could uh, you would just be dancing around your part as you probe, but oh, here. Okay. Um, you can just rotate oh, the that's table. Interesting. Okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. so right, what you did just then, I was watching, is you just, you're essentially almost holding the probe still, yep. and then you're just rotating the part underneath it. Exactly. Okay. So, it's, uh, it's, again, it's a very simple concept, but it helps, uh, you know, you would imagine logically thinking that adding another axis to the arm would, would reduce the accuracy, but what we right. found is since you're moving the arm a lot less, these encoders tend to move a lot less throughout their volume, and you're okay mainly moving, uh, you know, as you rotate your part, just this one uh, encoder, you actually maintain and sometimes see an increase in the accuracy you can attain. Okay. So I, I would kind of, 
I was thinking mostly large parts, but now, I, now that you're showing me, I can, I can see that there's really some advantage here even for smaller parts, just in terms of, of ergonomics. Definitely, yeah, right. Okay. And uh, one like you see, and then that translates to speed in terms of how fast you can do your inspection. Exactly, yep. Yeah. So uh, here we're uh, in CAM2 2018, that's Faro's inspection software. Um, this will work with uh, current third-party softwares as long as they support the Faro arm. Um, you can integrate Okay, so the there's A-taxes. nothing uh, to third-party software, if it already supports a Faro arm, it doesn't know that you've added an eighth axis. I mean, it's, it's, it looks just the same to it, right? Exactly, okay. yep. That's one of the beauties of the system as well. It's how simple it is. Okay. Right. So here uh, we've aligned to the CAD model. Um, so if I go to measure some features, you'll see my probe kind of uh, live on the screen there. Okay, so right? look, looking at the screen. So as I rotate, uh, you'll see that the part stays <laughs> relatively the same, but the, okay. the, you know, I'm not moving the probe though, but it's on the screen there, it's moving. Okay, so kind of related to what I just said, the software doesn't know the difference between the part being stationary and you moving around it versus Correct. you being stationary and roti- rotating the part. To the exactly. software, it looks, it's, a sa- it's the same thing. Right? Exactly right. Okay, all right. Okay, that makes a lot more sense then, all right. So this is just a clever way to, to give you that eighth access without really having to make major changes in software and Correct. third-party people are probably going, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly, okay. yeah. And like okay. I said, it's very simple. If, you're, if you're, your employees or customers already know how to use the Faro arm, then it's, it's, it's very intuitive to integrate the eighth axis. It's okay. one of the beauties of the, of the update. So what we'll do is, uh, like you mentioned before, we'll, we'll throw something a little bigger on here okay. um, to really show the capabilities of the mm-hmm. arm. And, and I'll, I'll get that. Our, uh, our director's son brought in <laughs> something kind of cool. Just bring that in. This is the... Uh, there you go. What's this called? The Y, the y wing? Is that what that's called? Gonna have some fun one with of the now. Star Wars, uh, one of the Star Wars ships. Very cool. I know you Star Wars guys out there are going, he has it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is actually a, a really cool application, scanning toys. So actually, uh, th- we're, we're using the Ferro Blue Laser at the moment. Okay. Um, a new announcement and product release is the Ferro Prism, and that's our new color capturing laser scanner. Okay. So that's great for um, product development um, applications, right? If you're trying to make, that's like, for example, a part like this, if you wanted to capture all the color detail, you could um, then go and like 3D print something with the okay. color data. Um, now, is that just is that just a laser scanner with a, a, a color camera mounted on top, superimposing the data, or what, what's? So, so the way that one works, uh, it's a green light. So here we have a, a blue light, right? Okay. But with that green light, there's a camera integration where it captures color data as well as the 3D point values okay. and assigns RGB values to those points based on the scan data, on the data. Okay. You so, wait, so. So it's not it's not taking a color image and overlaying a point cloud on the image. It's actually assigning a RGB color value. to each of those points that it scanned. Correct. Yep. Wow. So each individual okay. point, the whole the entire point cloud will have color values. Okay. Yep. So oh, that's a, that's okay. that's a kind of a new development. Um, it's kind of like at the point where you know color TVs came out. Right, <laughs> right. now, now, now yeah. we have color scanning, which is really, and what, really what's, cool. And what seems to be the interest in this right now? Uh, in the product design market, we've seen okay. the, the most interest. Um, and then uh, I, I believe uh, the metrology applications will kind of come as more people get access to the equipment okay. and figure out what they can do with it. And t- tell us, for those who might not be familiar with the Quantum S, what, what are some of the uh, 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 some of the features, the you know accuracy, all that yeah. sort of stuff? So uh, with the probe, you can get under a thousandths accuracy okay. readings, um, and then with the scan data, you can get under two thousandths. Okay. Yeah, this is the two and a half meter arm. Um, they come in one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, and a four meter arm. Okay. Um, one of the biggest advantages to adding the eighth axis is that you can effectively scan bigger parts with a smaller arm. Um, as you get up the scale in, in terms of arm size, you'll lose a little bit of your accuracy. Okay. So it's a, it's a major improvement to be able to maintain accuracies of the smaller arms on bigger parts. Uh, adding the eighth axis add around, adds around 50% um, scanning volume to the, uh, to the capabilities of the ferro arm. Okay. Now, if, if we switch over to the software here, one thing I'm seeing that I don't think I've seen on CAM 2 before is um, these red areas. What are those indicating to me here on the screen? um, The CAM 2, that's a new feature of CAM 2 2018. It's evaluating the angle at which you captured the data. So it's still showing the data as it captured, but the red is indicating that there's a a better angle you can capture it at. And once you capture it in that angle, you'll see it um, turn gray. Oh, okay. So so essentially this, this is a 
a real-time tool to tell the operator whether or not they have the optimal angle uh, exactly. uh, for, for, the, for the laser scan. Yeah, okay. it's giving you real-time feedback yeah. in terms of the quality of the data you're yeah. capturing. And then, then like you said, if, if it's red, you can just simply go back over it at a better angle and fill in those spots. Correct, okay. yep. Oh, okay. Now this works with, does this work only with the, with the Quantum S? Yes, it works okay. with uh, the latest Quantum S, M, and E arms. It currently can um, support older arms. Uh, all you need to do, if you have a current new Quantum, all you need to do is update your firmware and you'll be able to connect an eighth axis. Okay. So that's a simple uh, online, you just download the newest firmware and it'll install automatically. And software, if you're using third party software, yeah, there's nothing you need to change. Nothing just change, just okay. make sure yeah. you have the, the latest drivers and again, latest firmware on okay. your arm, and you can. And again, like, like I guess, like we said, w like we said earlier, is the software doesn't know the difference. Right. It, yeah. So as you see, we're we're getting some really really great get great data. Yeah. Um, the laser is capable of capturing really really fine details. It will capture fingerprints. Um, you know, down to two thousand. That's that's really really small. And you can use in, in you can use the the hard probe and the 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 laser scanner. At the same, not simultaneously, but at the same time, right? You can you yeah. can take a point measurement, and you can go back and do a do a scan depending Correct. what it is you're trying to do. Okay. Yeah, and th that's key because a lot of the the laser is line of sight. So okay. if there's anything that you need to capture, for example, that the laser can't necessarily see, okay. um, there's a lot of different probe extensions and adapters that can help you get into tight spaces where, you know, if your laser can't get in there, you can probe it, keep that data, and that helps a lot in, in many many applications, right? So this is very cool. So uh, I, th I think we also said that, so, so the kind of the advantages here of this is with smaller parts, it's more ergonomic, yep. so it's, it's faster, uh, less movement, uh, less operator fatigue, but with larger parts, I think is where you really see the value is yeah. you don't have to hopscotch, right. you don't have to like reach over the top and Correct. be a contortionist in order to get to things. Exactly. It's just a, a lot easier. And imagine without having to leapfrog, leapfrogging hurts accuracy a little bit too, right? Yeah, okay. on average you can see about a thousand. It depends on how well you're, you're able to tie back in okay. to your, your data. Uh, if you're doing 3D scanning, let's say you move your part, rotate it, whatever you need to do, right. you can do a best fit. Um, usually in most softwares you can just tie those two scan data together, but there's also yeah. an inaccuracy involved with that process. Sure, so, so by eliminating that, you just eliminate another source of, of uh, inaccuracy. inaccuracy, okay. Correct, All yeah. Right. Ah, so that's, cool. that's one of the beauties of this system. We really try to focus on maintaining accuracy and reducing the amount of time it takes to inspect your parts. In the manufacturing setting, um, the inspection process can usually be a bottleneck, right? Okay. So this is one of those tools we're giving customers to reduce those bottlenecks and get products out the door as quickly as possible. Perfect, so this is the eighth axis. Correct. Uh, that's actually the name of it. Yep. Eighth axis. Eighth axis, correct. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have done Those marketing guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well Raphael, thanks for bringing in the eighth axis for us today. Awesome, thanks for having me. Well, there you have it. That was Dirk and Raphael Osborne, uh, of uh, one of Farrow's senior application engineers talking about their new, brand new 8-axis quantum scanner. What That's a great right. demo. That looked great. You guys did a great job yeah. presenting it. I Really, I hope all of you enjoyed it too. That was really yeah. pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. And now in a few minutes, uh, we want to remind you before we, we get a little bit more into this, um, we're going to be chatting live with Michelle Edwards, who's Faro's Director of Global Applica Applications Engineering and Training. So we want you to get your questions in now, and it can be re questions relating to product research and development, um, what we can do to encourage more women to take up manufacturing in general, rheumatology specifically, or really pretty much anything else. So write us now, again, at qdlqualitydigest.com, right there, Dirk's going to get it on, on live on, on the uh, on our stage here, and we can ask you the questions, uh, ask Michelle the questions on air. And, and also, because uh, Michelle has been with Farrow for quite a while, she's also familiar with a lot of Farrow equipment. So I guess I would throw in, if you got a specific question, and actually we did have a question come in yeah. on the uh, on the 8-axis. Yeah. If you got a question, uh, you know, related maybe to some Farrow technology or something, we can probably throw that at Michelle oh, as sure. well, because yeah. she's, she's very, Con, uh, understands all of Farrell's equipment really well. Yeah, so, very active in, um, in the so anyway, <laughs> on that particular product, like you said, what was really amazing about it, and we talked about it quite a bit during that that video, is just that it's such a simple solution. I mean, if you've ever seen anybody use a portable arm, 
even if it's on a small thing, yeah. there's still a lot of, you know, you've got the stationary thing in order to get the armor you need it. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of twisting. So ergonomically, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to yeah. use, or it can be fatiguing after a long time. So the idea that you can just kind of sit in one place and simply rotate the object under it yeah. is just kind of a no-brainer. But really where it comes into play, I think, as we talked about there, so, uh, something you have something large like a car door, and in the past you would either have to reach over it or walk behind it, yeah. or you would have to leapfrog. You'd have to move the, the tripod and, and, the, uh, and the arm to the other side mm -hmm. in order to make those measurements. So there's somewhat of an accuracy hit on that. Not much, but it's a little bit. Um, and also just tearing down, setting back up, you know, th that whole thing. It's just such a simple solution. I, it's just a, a kind of, and also just that it uses existing parts. Mm -hmm. And also that it isn't, it isn't like a whole new system. If you have an existing quantum scan arm, you can just attach it. Mm -hmm and firmware update and any of your software that you if you're already using if you're already using any software whether it's Ferro software or a third party software that already uses uh, the Ferro uh, quantum uh, arm uh, as as its input it doesn't make any difference it, it's still it's the software is still going to work so it's such a great little solution just to drop right in i think it's really a fantastic little product well so. i think i think it speaks to to what we're kind of talking to here on the show today is, is innovation i mean a lot of times your solutions to your problems you're having are pretty don't have to be all that complicated yeah. i mean simple things are often the best ways to address problems and the problem of leapfrogging is one that we've heard of for years sure. i mean it's been it's been a known issue for for a yeah. long time again not just from the ergonomic issue of of, of having to you know either twist or move but also right. the accuracy there is a right. slight accuracy hit yeah and that slight hit matters yeah. ultimately so not having to do that is really really pretty important and this is a really really cool yeah. solution for doing that uh, as Dirk mentioned we first saw it at, at IMTS in Chicago about a month ago uh, everyone out there who's seen it has seen it for the first time there other than those people at Farrow themselves and have been delivering uh, developing it so yeah. pretty pretty cool solution